want to, you know, quickly ask you, did you get a chance to see the fight over the weekend, Haney and Lomachenko? And what's I your did. Thoughts? What thoughts I did, yeah. I thought, I thought it was just a fantastic fight. You know, uh, I actually never scored it because I was just enjoying the fight. You know, I was enjoying the high level uh, skill and IQ involved in that fight, the high pace. Lomachenko working really well and throwing his punches a lot earlier than he usually does. Um, but a lot of them having not much effect on, on Haney. You know, a lot of just pity patty punches. But um, having said that, he, he did score really well. And I thought Haney was very good early on for the first half of the fight as well. I thought Haney was, was picking his body shots and picking his jabs. And I thought it was a fight that could have went either way, really, to be honest. Um, uh, as I said, I never scored that. I was just enjoying the fight. But I, I do think probably Loma probably could have edged it. Um, but also I can see an argument for Haney as well. But um, it was one that could have went either way. I'll need to sit back and watch it again and, and sit and score it. But on initial thoughts, I thought Loma probably just nicked it. Um, but I can have an argument for, for uh, Haney as well. I uh, <clears throat> appreciate you talking about it because I know a fighter like you, all you're thinking about is Tiafimo Lopez, June 10th. But there was a time you and Devin Haney shared a common trainer with Ben Davison. Are you open to fighting him soon at 140? You get past Lopez, he moves up? Absolutely. I'm open to fighting anybody. You know, um, at this stage of my career, it's, it's big fights now for me. So whatever um, whatever happens, you know, if, if everything's right and – the way I like it and, the way, and it's right for me at the time, absolutely. You know, you never say never to fight these guys. So, yeah, absolutely. Mm, uh, and, and just, um, well, sorry, uh, lastly on that, um, anything you recall from the sparring sessions that you guys had uh, here in Las Vegas a couple of years back? With who? With uh, Haney. Did you? I, I, well, I've, did, no, I've never, I've never sp okay. sparred with Haney. No, I've, never, I've never ever been in the ring with Haney. You, you make an ass out of yourself when you assume sometimes, huh, Josh? But <laughs> <laughs> I've only I've only ever met Haney once, I think, um, and it was quite brief. You know, I've only I think I think it was very brief. It was I think it was the last time I was in Vegas. Um, very briefly, you know, I've only spoke to him once, really. I think so. Yeah, and it was just a brief encounter, to be honest. I yeah, met his I, dad and stuff. I met his dad and things like that. But um, it was, it was a brief encounter I had with him, and it was I believe it was at a. Uh, it was some event or whatever, but um, it was very, very brief. But it sounds like you're 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 good to go at 140 then, because I remember there was a time after Ramirez you're thinking of 47. But if you're yeah. you're open to Haney and all that, then that means the weight's not being too tough on you. Is that right? No, the weight's been great. The weight's been brilliant. You know, um, I can always make the weight good. Uh, just for the last one, I've switched off a little bit, a little bit of complacency um, crept in. You know. And, I never saw the inside of a boxing gym for a few months. You know, I was just out eating good food, drinking a little bit too much and enjoying myself and enjoying the victory. Um, and, you know, a little bit, little bit complacency crept in. I got the fight to come back to the gym. I came back fat, slow and heavy um, and tried to get back into shape too quickly and picked up a couple of injuries. Um, then picked up COVID and then had a chest infection. And it was like, you know, I just had a bad, bad camp. But, Mentally, I was, wasn't switched on. I was just so sort of like, get myself fit and I'll beat this guy, no problem. And that was the mistake that I made, you know, uh, underestimating your opponent. Yeah, because you're a guy that functions a lot off that edge you bring on fight week. Once, once you know, the nice guy I'm talking to now leaves yeah. and the fighter comes and it sounds like you lost that edge for a little bit there after getting... Yeah, just, a, just yeah. a little bit of complacency crept in, you know. I don't believe it. Jack Carroll's not on my level, you know. I, I, do, I genuinely think he's not a world-level fighter. Um, he's not an elite, certainly not an elite world level fighter, you know. So um, I just had a, a really crap night, and he had a really good night, and still never done enough to win. Still came up short. Um, but yeah, just that fight for me was was just my mentality was just wasn't there, you know. I made that I made that old classic mistake of looking past someone, um, and I tried to learn from fighters in the past from doing that. But you're only human, and uh, having to had the success you have have had in such a short period of time, um, you do tend to enjoy it and lose a little bit of sight, and that's the mistake that I made. So I'll not be doing that again. Any any message? You live and you learn, right? You live and you learn. Absolutely. Any, any message to Jack and, and the fans who still talk nah, about? I'm not, I'm not interested in fucking Jack Carroll. <laughs>